short presentation I will be giving you today is based on an ongoing and preliminary project, which is trying to do uh, one thing, which is charting the existence and uh, activities and, pra in, uh, and practices of all the main colonial concessions that have been operating during the colonial period in Africa. This is a joint work with uh, many familiar faces for those of you who took the course. So we have Etienne Lersignol, Stelos uh, Mikalopoulos, and Elias Bapayon. So before I jump into the core of the presentation, let me make two acknowledgements here. The first is that on behalf of the team, I would like to thank the European Research Council and the Wheeler Institute for Business and Development for generously funding our research. And the second remark is that this project is truly an effort uh, of teamwork. And above and beyond the four economies that you see listed here, we have a team which has been composed by economists, historians, policy scientists, and cultural anthropologists working on four continents, Europe, North America, South America, and Africa, and many countries in these continents that have been basically uh, performing tasks which were fundamental for, for the success of the process. So I unfortunately don't have time to list all of them, but this is the slide in which we acknowledge their amazing work and this project could not be there without their, their, their great work. Now, the approach of our, of, our, of our project, or if you want the ambition of our project, is try to move beyond case study, given the heterogeneity that we know it exists on the ground, it exists on the ground, and move somehow beyond the local effect to measure externalities and economic wide implication and interconnection of this corporation. Another very important thing that we would like to do is to trace the evolution of colonial concession companies over time. Because I mean, if we really want to unbundle a treatment, we also need to unbundle the time dimension that is uh, effectively inside the stream. But in order to do that, we would need a detailed and granular mapping of colonial activities of this concession, business investment and institution. So what we try to do with this project is basically filling this kind of gap and collecting the most comprehensive uh, um, evidence that we could on what this colonial, um, of this colonial concession company were doing on the ground. So as I said already, this project is in nature multidisciplinary. We have interacted a lot with people from other fields in social sciences, and we learn a lot about the kind of data that we were using, what uh, and, other, and other insights. And for this project, we also took up an African approach, right? Given the fact that many colonizers and many companies were active in different countries, we took basically, we scaled up the project and tried to recollect, record, classify, and somehow providing some quantitative information for all the main concession firms in colonial Sub-Saharan Africa, with an exception, which is South Africa. So the, working, uh, the, the, the work of the team has been basically to collect data from primary, secondary sources, as well as archival information, and then digitize this kind of data. So we had a country expert that was designated, his task was basically to understand what the concession throughout the period of colonization meant for each given country that we studied in terms of activities, practices, finance, and operation. We then visited more than 20 colonial archives in more than nine countries in Europe and in Africa. And there is this project, uh, there is this process, sorry, of ongoing digitization of roughly 1,500 concession company that we derive information on the boundaries and other characteristics from more than 1,800 maps are across 24 African countries. And then, of course, as I said, we're still using uh, the knowledge that we have in the team to validate the data that we have. Okay, so we are interacting with scholars, both in Africa and outside the continent, to check whether we can improve the information that we're getting from the colonial archives. And I'm willing to go back to this uh, to this to this uh, part later. So, first of all, we have information as of today for 1,454 concession companies spanning across 24 sub-Saharan countries. 
And as I said at the beginning, we have several informations that like containing the life cycle. So when the company started and when it stopped, we know uh, information about the main economic activities, what they were producing or extracting, where, uh, and we also know information on the market structure. We know ownership and financing. We know who the shareholders were, who the shareholders were, uh, the capitalization and the nationality of the cycle. And then we also have several information on all these other variables, which I listed before, relating their relationship with the states, with local population, and so on and so forth. Now, in terms of coverage, what we do have at the moment are the following green countries. So we have completed the collection of sectoral data, country reports, and code books for the majority of the part of West Africa, and then for the uh, basically part of East Africa and Southern Africa that goes from uh, North Sudan to Mozambique to Namibia and as well uh, Madagascar. There are other countries which are coming in the next weeks, which are the countries that were basically, uh, that were belonging to the French Equatorial Africa. Uh, and then we're also going to focus on Ethiopia, Nigeria and, um, and Angola. Now, in this subset of data that we have, I can show you, perhaps for the first time, the spatial distribution across country of the numerosity of colonial concessions that were at least active in one of the period of colonization. So you see that there is sizable variation in the employment of this outsourcing practice of colonization through private means in Mozambique, uh, Ghana, DRC, Tanzania, and our coast. These were actually pretty extensive practices at the country level, less so in countries like Mali, Somalia, and, uh, and Amin. Now, this is clearly not the final level of aggregation at which we can present our data. We can do better. So in order to show the level of spatial and temporal disaggregation that we have on this data set, let me zoom in, allow me to zoom in to Liberia once again. Could have been another country, but it so happened to be Liberia for, for this presentation. So this is the situation on the ground in terms of colonial concession in Liberia in the second period between 1920 and 1944. So you see that we have two concessions. We jump then to the third period and we're able to see that now colonial concession are more present here in this period. So just to grasp a little bit the kind of dimensionality of data that we will have available to use in, in, in the next weeks. Another thing which is interesting to show is for, remember that for each of these polygons, we also have information uh, on activities and other characteristics. So we can perhaps show you something else, which is the distribution by main economic activities of these 400-ish, uh, sorry, 1,400-ish uh, companies on the ground. So you, as you can see, the majority of uh, this concession company, they were basically uh, um, producing uh, as a main activity, uh, activities related to mine, and you see it here, as well as basically plantation and agriculture, which is the second category. Now, these are non mutually exclusive category because many concession were actually doing more than one economic activities. And interestingly as well, there were a lot of action, well, it's a little bit less, but still some sizable action on prospecting and on trading. Okay. Now, for the sake of time, just let me try to conclude. So as I said, this is an ongoing research that try basically uh, to, to do one thing. So we would like, uh, departing from the understanding that the experience of non concession company is common to many African nations, and that there is an important spatial and time variation in both the presence and intensity of these colonial activities, we offer and we would like to provide this new data set to start investigating from a Pan-African perspective, the impact of concession at this continental scale. This is the idea of opening the way to answer new, new and old questions this day.